Uh, how's everybody doing today? All right, so we have one person that is giving me a thumbs up. Thank you very much, Mo, for your participation. I appreciate it. Uh, anyone else doing más o menos? Efraín, how you doing, bro? Good to see you. Can you guys hear me okay? If, if, if you guys that are in an office and hear you, I'm just trying to set it up to the big TV. Okay, I, let everybody know. I want them all. I want them all to crowd me. I want them all to be near me. I'm not going to spit on them. This is all virtual. Okay, we're going to switch to the conference room, but we're going to have everybody over there. All right, let's rock and roll. All right. Okay. All right, guys, let me go ahead and just get the, the party started here. I'm going to share a couple of quick little notes um, with everybody. So, again, we can just uh, rock and roll here. Let me just make sure that this screen is set up. I'm using Canvas as a platform today and uh, just want to make sure that I have the right screen. So can you guys see the screen okay? It should say Q&A session on it, yeah? Okay, great. Um, yes. Well, Perfect. Welcome, everybody, to today's Q&A session. And I know that, you know, just being where we are in the time of year, there's a lot of people that are just taking a step back. There's a lot of people that are out Christmas shopping. There's literally six days left, uh, you know, till, till Christmas time. So we're in a very, very busy time of year. So the fact that you're taking you know, the next 45 minutes to an hour with us uh, means a lot to us. You know, as we wrap up this year, there's a lot of things that we went over from a coaching standpoint. There's a lot of, there's a lot of unanswered questions. There's a lot of lessons that have been learned. There's a lot of things that we've discussed from a coaching standpoint that maybe you still have some questions on. Maybe there's still some implementation or application that's still needed on your part. Um, in order for, for you to grow and, and, and really just thrive in this new year. And before I kind of get started with what I'm going to say, I, I really want you to understand that the people that ask the most questions are the people that succeed in this business. Every time I've put myself in a bigger room, right, with, with people that are producing, you know, X amount of units, you know, a month or, or, or make millions a year, you know, the common denominator that all of these people have is that they're very, very inquisitive. As a matter of fact, um, I filmed a podcast with a good friend of mine yesterday, and uh, which will be shared here in the upcoming weeks. Carlos Martinez, if you know him, um, he's, he's part of the coaching program. And one very, very um, cool thing about him is that he asks a lot of questions. So from the gun, he's just been asking a lot of questions that just have helped him it really pave the way into his success and not to really, you know, steal the thunder of that podcast that's going to be coming out here soon. But, um, you know, his first year in the business, he did nine closings, um, made about, you know, 99,000, just shy under a hundred, a hundred grand in, in his first year. And in his second full year, you know, being coached with us and particularly coach Kang, uh, and asking him a lot of, you know, he's, he's asking a lot of questions to his coach. He's already broken over 200,000, you know, dollars this year with, uh, I'm on track to do 25 closing. So as a result of all this, and the fact that he's asking questions, this is now your platform platform to do the same thing. Okay. Um, but before, again, we get started, I want to, want to make a couple of quick announcements. Um, I want to make sure everybody knows that, you know, behind the scenes, John and Natalie and myself have been really, really working on our branding. And this is a sneak peek, but, uh, very, very soon we're going to launch the fact that uh, we're going to rename our brand, we're going to rename ourselves to be known as Next Level Coaching. So uh, the logo does not look like that, by the way. Uh, that's a surprise that I cannot share with everybody yet. But just know that there's been a lot of time, a lot of emphasis, and a lot of attention being put into our branding. Uh, and, and we hope that this serves almost subconsciously to you guys that you, you have to create a brand. People will remember the brand. People will remember how you make them feel and, and, and we're all that working collectively will define your success. So again, more information, more news will be coming soon. Um, but we will be called Next Level Coaching uh, uh, here. We'll be making that announcement to everybody here real quick. You guys are just the first to know. And just know that we're going to have taglines under each of our platforms. For example, um, one thing that we've discussed for our broker owners and our, our team leaders, they're going to be called Next Level Elite. Uh, the retreats that we do, Next Level Retreats. Uh, for the newer agents that are joining the platform, they'll be under the Next Level Academy. Think something like that. You get what I'm saying? So 
Um, just make sure that you participate with what we got going on next year because we are going to be doing something big, okay? And as a reminder, I want you guys to meet everybody. Uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of things that uh, some of you guys that don't know me, there's some of you guys that don't know uh, uh, Coach John Kang, there's some of you guys that hear from Natalie all the time, but obviously, you know, you don't know who we are, you don't know the faces, you maybe see them on Zoom, uh, but I want to kind of put a face to the name, and I want you to know that that this is our team. Um, Natalie is our director of operations. Uh, coach John Kang and I, we're, we're the lead coaches here. And um, I'm excited to also announce that because of our growth, because of where we're headed, we're going to be uh, bringing on board uh, a new coach. Some of you guys may know him, uh, Mr. George Cardenas. Uh, he's going to be joining uh, and, and, and really spearheading uh, a certain category of our coaching. And again, more information will come back uh, we'll come back really soon with that, but uh, let's go ahead and give George a big round of applause. He's been, again, in his business and where he's taking his business, and particularly, you know, in the last 18 months that I've worked with him. I mean, talk about taking four, five, six listings consecutively every single month, all the time. You know, where it's gone with, with just himself to now he's got a team of four people, um, and he is... I, th I think if we, if I remember the numbers correctly, he is about 60 to 70% listing based. So he provides a ton of value to his particular real estate production team. Uh, and he's, as a result of that, uh, on track next year in 2020, uh, 2024 to do $900,000 in gross volume. And the really cool thing about all that is that he's able to spend more time uh, traveling with his wife. So I think, I think he took like three or four vacations this year where the year before that, he wasn't really able to do any of that because he was just so busy with work and life. So again, let's welcome George. He's gonna uh, be working with some of you guys and a lot of the new people that are gonna be coming on board, okay? So um, also, don't miss out. Um, we're kind of running towards the end of the month, but if you know somebody that really needs to be a part of our community, and particularly our role play mastermind sessions that happen every Monday through Thursday, um, refer them, refer them to us. They will start, um, they'll get their first month for 50 bucks and, uh, and it's 97 bucks thereafter. But again, what we're going to be coming up with here in the near future, you know, these scripts, these role play sessions play such an important vital role in your communication skills, because you can be the smartest person in the world. You can know what to do. You can, you can do the activities, but people will really judge you on the way you communicate with them. And if you don't know how to communicate with people, then how smart really are you? So take advantage of this promotion, share it with people. Um, if you're a member of the group and, um, and you got people share with us and we'll definitely, you know, incentivize you guys as well, okay? Also, uh, as I go on, January, um, obviously today's the 19th, uh, January 1st, obviously is New Year's Day. Um, just to give you guys an idea, we will start back our um, coaching sessions the week of January 8th. Again, just as a reminder, okay? So you guys won't be able to see us for the next uh, couple of weeks, but know that we're here with your, um, always with you in spirit. And if you need us, uh, text me, call me, text John, call John, and uh, we'll be happy to uh, make sure that we tell you to go 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 put in some work, okay? Okay. Um, Follow us, follow us on social media, scan some of these QR codes, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow our podcast uh, on Spotify and YouTube. Uh, like I said, I just filmed a couple of episodes yesterday with some uh, people that uh, you guys will definitely uh, love to hear from. Again, how to, you know, I, I just finished up one that was uh, uh, aired yesterday uh, from uh, Mrs. Moni Wilder, Wilder. She's out of the Phoenix, Arizona area. And uh, there was a typo on the caption. Her and her team actually closed over 200 deals a year. And, uh, and she's done, been able to do that within a, a six-year period. So those are the types of conversations that you want to participate in. And uh, again, just follow the podcast for some of that information. Uh, they launch every Monday, okay? So now, here we go. Questions and answers. Here's a cool thing. You guys have two um, amazing coaches here today. Um, myself and John, we're here to help you guys grow. We're here to answer any questions. So I'm going to leave it now up to you. I want you to ask a question and I want you to maybe even pick a coach. Maybe we'll both answer. Who knows? 
But I want you to ask questions. B, this is an open arena for you guys to really just, again, uh, sharpen you know, that pencil for you to dot that I, to cross that T so that you guys can start to put into application what is necessary for 2024. So now the floor is yours. Who has the first question that we can answer? We got a question for you. Okay, who is, this is Hector, so, right Hector? This is Hector, yes. 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 So, so I know that uh, making, making phone calls, calls and being, being uh, consistent with them, it's repetitious boredom and it gets old and sometimes when you don't get results, right? So how do you get out of that cycle? How can you just say, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing these, I'm gonna keep making these calls uh, regardless of the results. And Mo and I were talking about that this morning. So if you can share some, enlighten us in with that. Who do you want th to answer that, John or myself? Because you're going to get uh, two. I, you're going to get two very, I, I, very. What if both of you guys answer them, because I know you guys both think differently. Yeah. So, you want to answer that, John? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, guys, we're a result-based business, right? But when we're a result-based business, that's for the world to see. Right, that's for the brokers to see, that's for your clients to see, right? We want to do these things. But as fundamentally as a business, we're a process-based business. Guys, just because you want to live you want to lose 10 pounds, you go to the gym twice and it's not happening, you don't see progress, do you stop doing it? Right? Do we do we stop doing those things or do we fall in love with the process, knowing and having faith that it's gonna work out? Because look, in order for us to carry this business through. And see, and, and see the duplicatability and the scalability and the profitability and all that stuff, there's two things we need to master, which is routine and boredom. And if you have that much faith in the business, guess what? The obedience is a byproduct of that faith. So if you're not working in the process, we're not working through the breakdowns to see the breakthroughs, then my question to you guys is how much faith do we have? Am I making sense there? Obedience and the discipline to do the things that are boring, that's routine, so you can see. You may not physically see it yet, but you know it's coming because we're going to great, create great processes. you got to have a lot of faith. So I hear a lot of people say, well, John, I tried it for a couple weeks. I tried it for a couple months. Do it some more. Do it some more. The things that you're doing right now, it's getting worked out. Now, it's not going to get worked out right now. It's getting worked out. So put a, put a little bit more intention, a little bit more consistency to it, and see where we end up. Just like the business itself, guys, we don't start from January and December end there. This is a 20, 30-year thing. It's a marathon of things. Would you guys agree with that? 100%. So there's no stop in a beginning to it. It's continuous. Does that answer your uh, question, Hector? Yeah, and, and let me let me input let me let me throw in my input as well. You know, uh, I'm going to take a a page out of uh, Coach John Kang's book. It, it, if if you'll have to already understand and accept the fact that whatever we're doing will get boring. It will get boring. But if you stop as a result of it being boring, then how important was that goal in the first place? And that's a question that you guys have to ask yourself. Was my goal, was the milestone, was that, that carrot that I was chasing at the end of that stick, was it even that important for me? Because it will get boring. I'm going to tell you guys right now, so pay attention. Something will happen in 2024 that is completely out of our control. Um, we may have a new president at the end of the year. Uh, we may see a dip or an increase in rates. We may see a dip or increase in inventory. We don't know. Can we control that? Absolutely not. What we can control is our reactions to our goal. Because none of that matters. So how important was the goal for you in the first place um, for you to stop? Because it will get boring. You know, I'll, I'll throw in a, a, a health analogy here. 
you think that people that 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 want to lose weight or in, are in competing in 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 these uh, uh, competitions, you think eating fish and rice or fish and green vegetables five times a day for weeks, you think that gets boring? Absolutely. But the end result is much larger than the boredom. So we hope that answers the question, except the fact it will get boring. It will get boring. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Because I noticed that going to the gym, if I miss a day, I feel bad or I want to go. And and now I look forward to going because I built that momentum. So I I would say it's the same thing. Once you start seeing results, then you're going to continue to want to do it because you see results. So that makes a lot of sense. And, and to your point also, it's probably getting boring because we're not tracking the results that we're even getting on a day-to-day basis. You know, we don't, we don't see the slight little progressions that from a coaching standpoint, we see when we ask you for your numbers. When we say something like, how many, you know, how many contacts were you able to convert? Well, if you're not tracking that, how do you know you're even progressing? How do you know that you're even improving? You don't. All you, all you hear and what you have embedded in your mind is, no, not right now. No, stop calling. Uh, F off. Quit bothering me. That's all that we hear. And keep in mind, you will hear that. You'll hear that. So anybody that has a fear of calling or door knocking or open houses, guess what? You will get rejected. But you got to get past that rejection. And, and, and another little trait that helps is just tracking the progress. You know, again, using that, that health analogy, when you start to track your inches, you may not see the result on the weight, but you, see the, you feel the result in your pants because you're losing inches. And that's exciting. So do yourself a favor and start tracking your numbers so that you get exciting and it pushes past the boredom. Excellent question, Hector. Thank you for opening up with that. Anyone else? Let's get rocking and rolling. Now, I'm warmed up now. Let's go. I got a question. So when it comes to making calls, like I know we have the schedule as far as like, you know, the times and the leads that you call, but what's your thoughts when it comes to focusing on like one lead source? Because I find it, with me, I find it like I feel like I gain more momentum when I'm strictly like, let, let's say if I'm just calling expires for let's say two hours, I feel like deeper in my calls, I get, I gain more momentum and I'm actually talking to more contacts. The deeper I go into those calls versus switching every hour. That makes sense. A hundred percent. It makes sense. Yep. Yep. And I would tell you to, to stay with that pattern, Dijon, you know, there again, we are our own worst enemy because we have options. Now, even when we prospect, we have options. Expired calls, for sale by owners, database, uh, circle prospecting, the list goes on and on. And because we don't see results from one, then we just jump on another. No, master that one. Go deep into the conversations, just like you said. Absolutely. Absolutely do that. Any, Any comments, Coach John? Guys, you know, you're going you're gonna to start finding out <clears throat> the differences between the lowest, lowest hanging fruit and the highest hanging fruit. With the lowest hanging fruit, it's right now business. The high hanging fruit is future business. So if you're calling expires and physicals, those are the low hanging fruit. Now, if, you got you to see where the results are coming from. You're going to love on those results, double the efforts. However, it's good to diversify once in a while just to get your contacts in. The discipline of getting contacts in. But you'll see as you progress through your processes, right, of getting good with calls, you're going to start picking sources that's really prof- profitable for you. At the end of the day, it's, a pro- it's about profitability. And for me, and a lot of, uh, you know, why I found success was expireds and FISBOs, right? And, you know, latter por- portion of my career, I stopped doing the circle prospecting. I stopped doing the open houses because I found a lot of success here. But that doesn't mean you have to do like how I do it. You guys have to figure out through your processes. Yeah, and, and to just add to that, Dijon, you know, Coach John Kang said, I, I, because I tracked numbers and I found the results in these sources, I did the same thing and I just found the results in circle prospecting. 
That was my go-to. Circle prospecting and expireds were my go-to. Be but, but, but again, it's because I tracked the results and I saw the results. So don't, again, going back to even uh, how we answered Hector's question, track your results, track your progress. It's the only way you're going to find out if something is working for you or not. Instead of just jumping from one boat to another, and then at the end of the day, saying none of this works, you know, I'm going to go get a, I'm going to go get a nine to five, which I know that's not a bad thing, but I know that you're here for a reason. I know that you're here for a reason. Great question, Dijon. Who's up next? I should play the Jeopardy maybe soundtrack in the back, you know? Coach Ephraim's got one. Okay. Hey, Jose, first off, Matthew, I want to thank you and John because, you know, for the past two, three years now, you guys have been, uh, you know, a blessing in my life, in my career. Um, you know, kind of just even when it's just simple things as a mind shift or a form that we can use uh, to, you know, get our clients in contract. Uh, but going into 2024, uh, other than phone calls, what systems or tools do you think will be helpful to, uh, I guess, nurture all our leads and, you know, just get more systematic per se? You want to take that first, John? So the question okay, so was... One is, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'll take that. Yeah, number one, guys, is when the new year happens, people people always look for the new things. People look for new things to add on to their play. My position to co on coaching a lot of people is let's not go wider. Let's go deeper. What does your conversion rate look like? How are you closing? Are you do, are you, how's your listing presentation? Like if you're catching these contacts, how well are you converting them to a lead, lead to an appointment, an appointment to sign contracts? Go deeper in your skill sets and your processes. While we get really good with that, now we can start adding on what? Social media, content, uh, in-person in classes, how to do a 1031 class, and moving into uh, uh, building your generational through, uh, wealth through real estate, those classes are month to month. Like We can add those on, but right now in current processes, even if you were to catch a lead, how great are you in converting them? Let's work on those conversions, bettering those conversions before we start adding on more stuff. Guys, fact of the matter is a lot of agents want to do new things that, that, are, that are exciting. But see if you do them long enough, that too gets boring. That too gets mundane. Why not better our systems with what we have currently? My thing is let's go deeper and not wider. That's, that's my position. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. You know, and, and one thing that I'd like to add is you know, the system of really mastering or really just uh, making sure that you are adding people into your database or CRM. Everybody here for the most part has one. Um, the other question that comes along with it was, you know, what's, what's the best one out there? It's the one that you use, quite frankly. You know, um, develop your a routine that will allow you as you prospect, to John's point, deeper. doesn't You don't need to add a new thing, but just implement a, a routine that will allow you to take the contacts and the, the people that you're communicating with and making sure that you add them into your database. And again, this is not new. It's, it's, it, there's two things that are always, always going to stand out when it comes to success in this business, and it's uh, consistency and discipline. As long as you remain consistent in your prospecting and discipline and you adding people into your database, that, that right there is 98% of everything right there. So it's not about what's new, what new technology, uh, um, what new process. No, develop your process. I'm a huge fan of creating my own table, creating my own room. Create that for yourself. Create your routine. Keep in mind, 99% of real estate agents are looking for the next new thing that's coming out so that they can begin to work on it January 1st. How about you work on the things, again, to, Joe, uh, to Coach John Kang's point, why don't you work on the things that you just need to get better at? Better conversations, better questions, 
go deeper into your conversations, and as a result of that, your conversion rates will be increased. Thank you for the question, Efrain. Let's rock and roll, guys. Come on. Give us a good, give us a hard one. Give us a good hard one. Anyone else? Come on. Come on. Don't be shy. I'm going to start picking on people. I got one for you. Go for it, Jonathan. How do you know when you're tracking too much? I, I have the team pushing back on a lot of things that I'm tracking and saying that it could be too much at times, but I think that the accountability is there because it talks about each step of every type of transaction you do, whether it be a buyer or a seller. Um, just find out where the pain points are, where the fall-off points are. Um, how do you know if you're, you're going on the other end of the spectrum and doing too much? There's four basic things that we got to track and four basic things open uh, only that then, yes, will open the door to other conversations. But really, this is all, all, this, these are the only four things that, I, that I've always tracked. Number one is your uh, number of contacts. Write that down. So number of contacts, number one. Number two is number of uh, appointments. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's, let's, let's erase those two. The first one should be number of attempts or calls that you're making, okay? That's number one. Number two is uh, uh, appointments. Scratch that again. Attempts, calls, okay? Attempts and calls. Two is contacts. So number one, attempts slash calls. Number two, contacts. Number three, appointments. So I apologize for the confusion there. Number three is appointments. And number four is agreement signed. Those are the four basic, simple things that we got to track. Calls, contacts, appointments, agreements. After that, you, yeah, you can then have a conversation with someone about their conversion rates. You can then have a conversation in more in depth about their skill set just by tracking those four things. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, John, to that? Yeah, the importance between calls made and contacts, guys, is are we calling, are we waiting too long for people to pick up? Or are we having conversations for the sake of just having conversations? So, so that ratio, really, if you're looking at, an, let's say, per hour call basis, we don't want to overcomplicate things. We're talking to people that are over 18 about pitching our business as a real estate business, right? We're asking real estate-based questions. On a normal call that circle prospecting, your, the, the, the rate of contacts you're picking up should be 10 to 12. If it's lower hanging fruit where there's a lot of people calling, expires and fizzles, it's six to eight. Now, if you're out of those spectrums, that means either you're not asking enough questions or we're hanging up too fast. From contacts to appointments, that's going to establish your skill set, objection handling, your enthusiasm, your level of scripts, your, le your level of closing on somebody, right? Really like uh, expressing empathy and curiosity. It's going to reveal that. From appointments to contract sign, it's going to start revealing, hey, how good are you in terms of listening presentation? Getting your point across by asking a lot of questions and ultimately being confrontation enough to close on somebody in person. So it's going to give you those ratios. And Jonathan, if we're, if we're overcomplicating too, uh, uh, like too many tracking, people just won't do it. So like to Jose's point, keep it to four, and then we can, we can talk about ratios and why it's important in, in those conversion rates. That helped, Jonathan? Yeah, I have it down to, yeah, I have it down to like each step of the transaction. Like what you guys have, the four there, those are the main ones that I focus on. But... It's a weekly thing where it's just like, how many did you get to inspection? And then how many did you get to appraisal? And then if you have a bunch that go to inspection, but not that makes it to appraisal, I look at it as, all right, well, what are you negotiating poorly? But um, I can see the four things here, so um, I can tailor it back some. Yeah, the, I, I got my answer. Thank you. Yeah, and, and those are other metrics, again, that, that show up within a transaction, right? Obviously, this is after the, this is what happens after the agreement or after a contract is, is, is put into escrow, right? You know, obviously the, the the hypermetrics like, okay, inspection, check. Okay, it didn't make it to appraisal. Why? What happened? Are you asking for too much? Those are little side conversations. But again, we got to stay in the mindset of productivity. Productivity, productivity, productivity. So those are the four. Again, just those four things that we that we measure on. 
And again, every individual agent that is on your team, then you can have those sidebar type conversations and say, okay, great. Uh, let, let's, let's take a look at this and how, how can we improve this? That way we can get you all the way to the end of the finish line. Thank you for that question, Jonathan. Who's up? I got another question. So really quickly, before you start, Dijon, I want you to, I want you guys to start seeing, seeing the pattern here. Um, Dijon, I don't, I don't, Coach John Kang, you know, obviously speaks to you more, more closely, but you've had a really huge uptick in your business this year, from what I understand. And I want everyone else to notice that this is already, he's asking another question. He, he's, he's just in the mud, getting dirty, you know, asking questions. And the first question that he asked, did it help some of you guys? By a show of hands, did it even help the, the response that, that we gave him? So the questions that you guys have are for you and they're for everybody else. That's just maybe a little too shy to ask it. And, and just keep this in mind. Shyness doesn't serve you in this business. You can't be shy, a shy real estate agent, and expect to close X amount of transactions a year. It's not going to happen. So sorry about going off a tangent, but go ahead, Dijon. Now, it's good that you mentioned that because, like, you know that saying, no, you know, no question is a dumb question. So it's like, even if I ask a question and I feel like I might already know the answer, but by me asking that question and, you know, I'm getting the answers, helping someone else who probably have the same question. Um, so the second one is, how often should we be reviewing our business plans? Because I have a habit of having this business plan, right, for the year, and I'll review it maybe like once a month and then going into like month five or six, I won't even look at it until going into the end of the year. So like how often should we be like constantly reviewing, you know, these numbers and, you know, just tracking our um, our activities, you know, that we set out for the year? I do it every day. Every day? Every day. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, why wouldn't you do it every day? Is 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 the question. Um, every day something happens. There, there's there's a daily input that you do to expect an output. So that that input should be looked at, tracked, analyzed for what it's what the result is. You know, uh, I'm just going to use a, a a blanket example. Someone wants to close sixty deals you know, in one year. If you do the math, that's five escrows closed every month starting next month. First question that you got to ask yourself is, do I have those five escrows in, under contract right now to set to close in January? And if the answer is no, then guess what? Your input needs to increase. That tells you right away, my input, my daily activity needs to increase so that I can get back on track. That means, yes, I got to prospect more. That means, yes, I got to track my numbers better. That means, yes, I got to, I got to close. I track, I track them every day because the message has to come clear every single day. You know, again, I'm going to use an example of a good friend of mine. Um, he's, he's in the military and he's got a couple of years left for retirement. He plans on retiring in Thailand. And he talks about Thailand every single day. Every single day, if it's not him texting me, if it's not him actually vocalizing it to me, if it's not him sharing some type of a story or some type of a post online, he is talking about that every single day. And what he does on a daily basis just contributes to that. So wherever you are in your business, there's a daily contribution that happens for the output to come out, for that result to come. So I, I track it every single day. You got to, and if you don't, and, and from going from I don't track it to I got to track it every single day, yes, it is a discipline. Start by tracking it every week. You know, start there. And, and just start to, to create that habit to look at it every single day. Hey, Jose. Uh what were you um, let me just clarify just a bit. I would say probably review. Like, you know how, like, 
you do a monthly review, maybe a weekly review. You're talking about review this every day. Oh. Like for, it's like if you're tracking your contract, I mean your um contract to close ratio, right? You know, if you close five deals every month, at the end of the month you look at like all right, how many appointments I went on, how many contracts I open up. Like that, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, there, there's certain there's certain metrics that you can look at weekly or monthly or even quarterly. I get okay. that. Those, those are some of the monthly metrics. But again, those month but those monthly metrics are fed by the daily activity. You know, one day that you don't prospect will show up in your business sixty to ninety days later. So some of you people that get on my calls and say, "Oh, coach, I didn't get to prospect today." Uh, I'm waiting for this. You are delaying your own gratification. You are, you are then wondering why um, you don't have escrows. You're wondering why you don't have enough in your pipeline. You have to do that daily contribution to then feed the monthly metrics that you're looking at. And Dijon, all you need to do is identify which ones do I need to look at on a monthly level? Which ones do I need to look at at a quarterly level, a weekly level? And then the daily activities will feed all that. Hey, Jose, I wanted to uh, actually um, ask about time management, especially for a full-time agent. Um, I know we don't get paid for hours. A lot of uh, agents sometimes think that. Um, oftentimes, I am seeing agents sometimes kind of walk in 10, 30, 11 a.m., you know, kind of do a few things, then go an hour lunch, come back, and then maybe do an hour of admin work and then say that, they haven't got anything done. That's why it's so, or, oh, I put in three hours, and then I'll say, well, how many contacts did you make? How many outreach? Then it gets kind of real. But, um, and then some of them, you know, talk about, hey, I got in this business, so I didn't have to be full time at it. Uh, I don't think that mentality works in these type of markets, but maybe uh, what, what is time management and a, a daily schedule for a full time real estate agent look like? I'll let the master of schedules and time management and prospecting answer that one, and then I'll, I'll chime in at the end. Scott, that's a great question. A lot of agents mistake. Uh, it's not a matter of time management. It's actually goal management. They're not, they're not clear with their goals. And I've heard this, obviously, Jose has heard this, where, hey, I started this business so I can do whatever I want. That's why your, your paycheck reflects that. And as hard as that may sound... It's because our goals are very unclear. Because if goal is very specific and it's very important, daily actions reflect it. It's like, hey, I want to lose 100 pounds. Guess what? Well, you know, I started this thing, so, you know, I'll lose it whenever I want to. It's not a time management issue. It's a goal-oriented goal issue. Goal management issue. If you want to lose 100 pounds, guess what? You're going to do healthy things on a daily basis that is time restrictive, it's planned, and most importantly, there's execution. Guys, and, and, and I, I say this with the most loving heart. If anyone says, I, I, I do this business because I do whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, you gotta check your egos. There are top producers right now that are prospecting on a daily basis that I have a predestined, predetermined uh, arrival time. Certain activities they do in the morning, lead generation, and then uh, income servicing activities after lunch, and they have a specific hour when they go home, because that's that important. Don't mistake time management for goal management. If you lack time management skills, you lack, uh, you gotta specify, clarify, and simplify your goals. Let me, let, me, let me add something to that that may shake up a couple of you guys as well. Besides the goal not being important, which is why you don't do the daily activity to feed it, we, we live off of this story that we've created in our head that by showing up at 10, um, seeing what everyone else is doing, getting some coffee, going to a home inspection, going to an appraisal, and that's, 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 product, that's a productive day. That's, that's, let me help you erase that, that, that lie because it's a lie and you're lying to yourself. That is not a productive day. 
you, as a matter of fact, um, those that work with me, I've told you, I don't want you going on inspections. I don't want you going to appraisals. I don't want you to know how to upload something into Skyslope or Dot Loop or whatever you guys use as a transaction management system. I want you to lead generate because that right there is the lifeline and the lifeblood of your business. Going to an, ex an inspection to go understand the process and do all this, you're wasting your time. And then you come, you, you come to the office saying, whew, I had a productive day. I have nothing to show for it, but I have a productive day. No, that's, you are just feeding yourself a BS story. Who's next? I think a couple people hold left on, just on, as a result of that. Before we move on from this topic, guys, like by show of hands, who wants to do more than just make money? Like, like provide positive influence in the community, family, and all that stuff. Okay, cool. By having a plan and executing on those plans, that you're really telling yourself and the community that you serve is you want to play at a big level, right? You want to scale and duplicate that every single year. By you not producing and by you playing small, by not planning, not executing, and when we touch almost 33 people per transaction, you're, you're helping them put food and gas and roof over their heads. You're absolutely being selfish. If you play small without a plan, do whatever you want to do when you feel like it, you're being selfish. Because we all raise our hands in terms of having a positive effect at family and community. Our job is to play big so we can affect those around us and us in a positive manner. So I'll say it again. If you don't have a plan and you don't execute on a large scale, we're not playing big enough. And some of you that, that just got started, it's all relative. Play big in terms of where you are and we'll scale. Does that make sense, everybody? 100%. 100%. It's about planning and executing. All right. What's up? What's next? What's next? Hi, Jose. It's Karina. I don't know if you can see me. I see you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I was with that peak. Um, so I think one of the biggest and most important questions um, around this time of year is how do you keep yourself motivated? Um, I do see a lot of realtors and some that even come up to me and ask me the same question, like what is it that you're doing that's keeping you motivated? You're getting all these doors shut, you're doing the calls, you're doing all of this, you're getting a lot more no's. Um, what would you advise uh, to myself and to everyone to just kind of keep it going? I'll answer and then I'll let John answer because I think we have two different but similar um, answers to this. Number one, this is what I tell myself. Number one, I, wa I want you guys to understand that I am a human just like you. I have emotions just like you. I have fears and thoughts, uh, um, sometimes negative, just like you. I want, I, want you, I want you guys to understand that. But what I, what I have practiced within myself and what I tell myself is that I am and I was created to do something big. And the last thing that I want to do is to die. And when I get to the pearly white gates and God and you know Jesus is there saying, hey, Jose, how you doing? Let me introduce you to somebody. I, don't, I, want to, I want to be able to recognize that person because that's the image that he created me to be. Not me meeting a stranger. And him saying, this is what I created you to be, but you did not go out and get it. I gave you free will, but you just didn't, you just didn't get there. So I wanted you to get to know who you were meant to be and who I created you to be. You just didn't get there. I want to, I want to look in the mirror. And see, my coach helped me realize that. You know, some of you guys know that, that we've had the same coach. John and I have had the same coach for years. Years. 
we don't we don't do this for six months or a year. No, we're talking about years to the point where this individual knows me. They know my family. They know my children. They know how to speak to me because that's what coaches do. We know how to speak to you to get you moving. And that's all she needed to tell me was, Jose, you need to wake up because one of these days you're going to die. And you'll either meet your twin or you'll meet a stranger. Which one do you want to be? And that's all I need to hear. And I need to remind myself of that. Because like I said, yes, we are surrounded by a lot of negativity. We are, we are you know, for those of you that know me, you know, uh, uh, and, have, you know, probably John, you know, besides my sister, John's probably the one that has known me the longest when it comes to production and how we got started. But even before I met John, I've been laughed at. I've been spit on. I've been chased by dogs and bit and all that stuff and cussed at and yelled at, all that stuff. Does it hurt? Yes. Is it degrading? Absolutely. Did I stop? No. Because I know what I'm meant to do. I know why I was created. And I am following a path that will help me get there one day at a time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something that may upset you. Uh, I'm going to say something that's going to move you definitely in a positive direction or, you know, oh, John, like, I don't like this guy direction. Uh, but I don't really care because we're ultimately here for your growth, right? I'm not about your comfort. We're not about your comfort. We're here about your growth. So I'm going to give you two things. Motivation. What does motivation have to do with anything with your goals? Motivation is very entry level. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hot flame that burns really hot and dies really quick. So what does motivation have to do anything with goals? So that, but then if the goals were set, really it's that specific, what we're really lacking, what we're really looking for motivation, we're really looking for accountability. Why don't you go tell your loved ones, especially the one that have kids and spouses, why don't you tell them what we're gonna achieve when we hit certain goals? They won't let you forget it. That could be motivation, but more so it's accountability. The whole feel good, hey, you can do it. You got this, champ. Do we need that? Of course we do. But we can't live on that alone. It fades fast. So surround yourself. If you want to do things on a consensus basis, have a clear goal as to why that's important. Number two, set up heavy accountability. Heavy accountability with your kids, your spouse, your friends. And don't, don't tell it to anybody. Tell your goals to the people that actually have goals themselves. Because if you tell a million dollar goals to right, people that have minimum wage minds, that's where the ideas die. So go tell to people that reflect your level of commitment. I hope that answers your question, Kareem. It's not about the motivation. It's about the accountability and the, the specific, how clear your goal is. Here, I'll even, I'll even start that off. Everyone here, can I presume that everyone here has a goal by a show of hands? Yeah, everyone here has a goal? Perfect. Then I will allow you to hold John and I and the rest of our staff accountable. Our goal is to have 500 members by the end of next year and to generate six figures plus on a monthly, on a monthly level. So we welcome the accountability. Hold us accountable because we will hold you accountable. And I shared that. I shared that with uh, the leaders that we met with over the weekend. Five, zero, zero, 500. So go ahead and go ahead and hold us accountable. But uh, let the games begin. Okay, we got time for about one more. It's, it's about just just five to noon here. I know it's getting to three o'clock in the East Coast. Um, we have time for one more. Who's got the Who's got the last question? I have a question, Jose. This is Jess. Hi, Jess. Um. So right now, or I don't know if it's 
a question or more just I need advice right now I'm feeling super burnt out like I just don't have any patience with a lot of my buyers I it's kind of making me think like is this even the right career choice after all or uh, I don't know I'm somewhere stuck in that limbo right now so mm -hmm. what advice would you have for me going into 2024 let me let me um I'm going to answer it maybe a couple different ways. And again, I'll, I'll let John reply as well. Um, we are all going through a test. We are all going through a test to see if this is what we really want. You know, you, you feeling burned out from buyers is, is really, you know, and I'm going to say the word if it offends people, I'm sorry. Uh, but this is God's way of really testing you and saying, hey, Jess, you want to do this? Let me let me let me apply some pressure. Let me let me force you to grow. Let me show you what you're capable of doing without you knowing what you're capable of doing yet. We need to be put in these positions to be forced to grow. So expect it. Accept it. Learn from it. Increase your skill set to ask better questions so that you don't deal with those types of buyers. Create the scenario or the create the image of what an ideal buyer looks like for you. And that will force you to say, no, Mr. Buyer, I'm not going to work with someone like you because you don't meet my standard and my criteria. Whatever, however you determine that. An ideal buyer can be someone that is motivated to buy, someone that's willing to listen to me, someone that has this FICO score, someone that, that is only buying at this purchase price. You develop your own ideal buyer, but here's the thing. You need to be true and authentic to yourself that anyone else that comes that does not check off the box and say, I'm sorry, I'm just not working with you. That will, not, that will stop you from getting to burnout. Now, let's address burnout for really quickly because you're already there. Because you're already burned out, my advice to you right now is take some time off. Re-establish your goals. Re-establish your mindset. Disconnect so that you can get back into the mindset of this is what I want to do. You're here for a reason, Jess. You asked that question for a reason. You're in the right place at the right time in the right moment of your life right now. And it's okay to disconnect. Guess what? After today's call... I'm disconnecting. We set, our, we set our game plan together. We're talking to people that will, that will help us get to that goal. The game plan is set. Now I'm going to take a little break because I need that. And it's okay to do that. John, any feedback? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Jess, as you rest, and I want you to... I want you to really think deeply of, of self-awareness here is, you know, often we're frustrated, we're burnt out because there's a misalignment in, in what we want and what we're getting. Does that make sense, everybody? We want something, but we're not getting what we're expecting. So the management of that expectation is causing burnout. When that happens, that means we're trying to please everybody all the time. That ultimately means when you take rest and decompress, I want you to start raising your standards as to who you work with. You can't work with everybody and anybody. Where you're trying to go, we can't go and uh, we can't, and not everyone can go. What you're getting is God's provision. What you're not getting is God's protection. Do you, do you guys get that? While you rest, raise your standards. While we raise our standards, guess what? We have to put other things into action. And everybody has heard for years now, when you generate, you don't have to what? Tolerate. 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 Is that making sense, everybody? Just, have, just because you have faith doesn't, doesn't mean it makes things easy. Having faith means it makes them possible. So you got to have breakdowns to have breakthroughs. And for those of you that have been in business for a very long time, and that are seeing the level of success that you guys are seeing, there's a lot of failures and tribulations that you had to go through to get here. Right? My, one of my favorite uh, actors, Denzel Washington, 
If you pray for the rain, you better be prepared for the mud too. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. So this is this is a season. If, if it's a losing season for you, this too shall pass. If it's a winning season, be grateful for that. But live in the moment that everything's always getting worked out. Wonderful. You know, as we near the, the again, the 12 o'clock hour here, East Coast, you're at 3 p.m. Sun's about to set probably within the next hour, hour and a half or so. I, I want to finish this, I want to finish today's session with a little bit of accountability. So I'm going to ask every single one of you, if you want to be held accountable at a high level, I want you to write down the closing, your closing goal in the chat box. Write down your closing goal for the chat box. For my leaders out there, you know, and I have some, most of your guys' numbers already, but for the leaders out there, write down how many agents you'll be recruiting this year. You're going to start to see, when you start to put it out there, when you write it down, you are already starting the process for it to come to life. So Eric said 36. Mo, here's your verse. 42 and 24, my man. Okay. Jonathan, 100 transactions. Francisco, 40. Dijon, 40. Um, Will, 100 agents, 70 closings. Jonathan, 5 new agents. David, 24 new agents. George, um, 72. Danielle, uh, I want to make my first million in my first year. Tatiana, I want to make 20 or 30. Tatiana, which one is it? 20 or 30? Pick a number. Omar, 50 plus. Hector, 25 agents. Caesar, 20 agents. Scott, 45 new agents. Tatiana said 30. See, all this is being recorded. It's all, you know, we get our notes via AI. Maria, 35. So I, we have these notes. And as you guys... Go through your seasons because they will come and they will be evident. I want you to remind yourself of the importance of that goal. Give it feeling, define it, give it, give it, give it a purpose and it'll start to come to life. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, if there are no more questions, John, do you have anything else to say before we close out? If there's nothing else, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. It's been a crazy year. It's been a, a rough year for some. It's been an amazing year for others. And it's been everything in between for a lot of us as well. But I want you guys to remember, stay true to yourselves. Stay accountable to your goals. Enjoy this season. Enjoy it. Enjoy your kids opening up the gifts. Enjoy the process of that. Enjoy the time with the family. Enjoy the Christmas movies if that's what you do. Enjoy the time with your spouse girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, your parents, enjoy this time. And I will see you guys again the first week of January. I'm looking forward to it. God bless you guys. Thank you for an amazing year. Looking forward to another amazing year in 2024. Take care. Bye-bye.